anchoring on blockchain. I'm continuing my series of educational videos about blockchain. In this video, I would like to discuss anchoring and hashing on the blockchain. Hi, I'm Dr. Alexey Konashevich and you're on Blockchain State. Anchoring and hashing data on blockchain means publishing metadata and specifically in the case of hashing means publishing a hash sum of data on blockchain. Now let's unpack it. So blockchain is designed to secure transaction data. Who transferred cryptocurrency to whom? But beyond transactions, it can be used as a public repository for users' arbitrary data. Some of the largest blockchain networks can ensure an unprecedented level of securing data. Such ledgers are called immutable and their transactions are irrevocable. But please don't be mistaken that every blockchain is secure storage. You can learn more about it by watching my previous videos. Blockchain versus DLT is every chain of blocks blockchain that elaborates on the ability of different ledger technologies to become reliable and immutable. And does cryptocurrency have an intrinsic value? Can blockchain exist without cryptocurrency? It explains how Bitcoin became more than just cryptocurrency and gave birth to all other blockchain application platforms. So what is anchoring? If you can publish data on blockchain, you don't need to think about anchoring. But if, for any reason, you cannot afford to publish it, for example, because of its large volume, or you don't want to make it public, you can opt into publishing some metadata uh, or combine publishing a part of the data with its metadata. So metadata is something that describes your data but doesn't necessarily disclose it. It can be just a tip that gives you the knowledge of what it is. It also can store some important information, but only the initiated users will know what that means. Say, if you have repetitive records in your local database and you want to secure them on blockchain and ensure their chronology, then you can publish only timestamps when making your records. For example, you register when a car drives by. So each time you see a car, you send a timestamp to the blockchain. You can also add an ID to these entries if you want to identify and distinguish these records. For example, you put a timestamp and add one each time a red car drives by and two if you see a green car. So observers on a public blockchain will see some timestamps and numbers published from an anonymous address or addresses, but they will not know what that even means. You can even encrypt it. And only those who know your protocol will be able to extract and interpret the data from the blockchain. By the way, I've just almost described the principal design of a blockchain application. If you want to go further, you can watch this video, Blockchain Database. To summarize, we can say that anchoring means publishing metadata on-chain, while the data itself is stored off-chain. What is hashing? Hashing is a subset of anchoring. It's a kind of anchoring, but while anchoring can contain any metadata, in this case, it contains a hash sum of your data. And usually when people say a hash, they refer to a cryptographic hash function. It is more rigorous and accurate terminology, as not every hash is cryptographic. In the example of uh, red and green cars, one and two, are also a kind of hashing. Just bear this in mind so you are not confused by intricacies of this terminology. Why would anyone want to publish a hash sum? This technology allows you to identify your data. It is a kind of digital fingerprint of your data. It doesn't disclose the data, but it exclusively represents it. Strong cryptography can ensure that the hash is unique to any given piece of data. And even if you copy this specific piece of data, and when you generate a hash sum for each copy of it, you will get the same hash sum. This allows you to check the authenticity of your data, to check if your original data is tampered with or not. 
Suppose you have a file, say a contract, you generate a hash sum of it and publish it on the blockchain. Then, if you lost the file, you can ask your counterparty to send it again. So how do you ensure that this file is exactly the same one that you had before? You can check it by calculating the hash sum of the new file and comparing it with the previous hash sum. If hashes are identical, the file is the same. Even if one bit of that file is changed, it will necessarily result in a completely different hash sum. So you will know that it's a different file. You might have heard something like, we use the blockchain to secure data. So in those cases, when they refer to hashing, it is incorrect to say that they secure the data. In this case, they secure only hashes on the blockchain. Hashes become immutable, while if they don't protect the data itself, and if it can be easily changed or deleted, for instance, as a result of a hack attack, the hash can only provide the knowledge that your storage doesn't contain the original data. And because the hashing is a one-way function left alone with this hash, you cannot get your data back. So when someone says they protect data by publishing hashes on blockchain, they don't. You don't need a fingerprint if your finger is cut off. Thus, hashing can efficiently work if the data is protected, for example, by a backup. If you wish to know more about real-world applications of hashing, you can watch my video about Bitfury's project with Land Registry in the Republic of Georgia. That's all for this video. Thanks for your attention. Remember that your likes suggest to YouTube algorithms that this video is worth showing to other people. So please hit that button and don't forget to subscribe to be able to watch my new videos. See you in the next video.